Right, welcome back. We will now continue with the characteristic of a DC series model. Now, DC series model's main characteristic is that it has high starting torque. And because it has high starting torque, so it's very suitable for applications such as like, you know, crane, where you need to lift up heavy object at the beginning and then you will slow down. Uh, so, things that need a uh, high starting torque, DC series model is very suitable. Okay. Again, the same principle for our mathematical analysis is still the same. Back EMF EV is proportional to M flux, torque is proportional to flux IA. Now, the only thing here now, we ask ourselves, in series model, which current is responsible to produce the flux? And if you recall our series model diagram here, the, there is only one current that passes through our series model. And I have already mentioned before, we could call it IL, line current, we could call it field current, we could call it armature current. And, but let us call it armature current because in our mathematics, it's easier if you call it armature current, then it's less confusing to yourself. Okay, let's look at this relationship again. So EB2 over EB1 equal to N2 over N1 flux 2 over flux 1. Right? And should you need to replace the flux with the current, it will now be replaced by IA2 and IA1 because that is the current pass through RF and that is the current that produces the flux. Alright? Can you see the difference between the shunt model? Shunt model just now we replace it with IF. But for series model we replace it with IA. Alright? And as well as top, we would have top developed 2 divided by top developed 1 equal to flux 2 over flux 1, IA2 over IA1 and this time if we replace by flux it will become IA so it's IA2 over IA1 multiply IA2 over IA1 and then give rise to IA2 square over IA1 square alright, why square? because both currents are the same current got it? Okay, so with that now, let's move on to our working examples of a DC series model. So in this series model here, we have certain torque, right? It was running, it is running at 500 RPM. The current drawn is 60 ampere and RF and RA are respectively like as such. So let's calculate EB1. EB1 is going to be as minus IA1 RF plus RA. Series circuit by Kirchhoff's voltage law, and I know all this value, all right? And I substitute the value, and I get the answers of four hundred and eighty-two volts. Okay. And the power developed is equal to EB one, IA one, right? And I substitute four hundred eighty-two multiply sixty, and I get two eight nine two zero watt. And with that, I calculate the torque developed. Torque developed one is the 60 over 2 pi N1 multiply power developed one. So substitute the power developed, substitute the speed, and I get the answers of 552.33 newton meters. So this is my first situation. Now then you move on, then my torque changes. My torque changes. Alright? And the top changes in such a way that it draws now 40 ampere. 40 ampere, lesser current. Huh? Alright, so that, therefore the top is lesser. Okay, so let's find out the new speed. Now for shunt model, we realize that the, with the different torque, the speed stays rather constant. But not for series model. Let's find out. EB2 equal to Vs minus IA2. RF plus RA, right? And I substitute all this value in there and I get 488 volt. Okay? And I find power developed 2 is going to EB2 times IA2. Substitute EB2 and IA2 and I get 19520 watt. Right? I want to find new speed. So I use the EB's proportional relationship. EB2 over EB1 equal to N2 over N1 and uh, flux 2 over flux 1 and I replace it with IA. 
right? It was flux two, flux one, but it's a series motor. The current that's responsible to produce the flux is IA, so we substitute with IA, right? So I have EB two value, I have EB one. I calculated it. N one is given. N two is an unknown that I need to find. I also knew no IA two. I also knew no IA one, right? So if I want to substitute all the value, that is four eight eight divided by four eight two. N2 is an unknown, N1 is uh, 500 RPM, and IA2 is 40 ampere, IA1 is 60 ampere. So with that, we calculated out that the N2 is now 759.33 RPM. Alright, can you see there is now a, a lot of changes in the speed with the change in torque. Right? It was 500 RPM, but now it's 759.33 RPM. So it, this is the difference between Chan motor and series motor. Okay? And the original torque was 552 Newton meters. How about this new torque now? Right? If I were to calculate the new torque using 60 divided by 2 pi, N2 multiply power developed to formula. If I substitute the value, I will get 245.48 Newton meters. Right? So that is the difference in the torque. Uh, and also a big difference in the speed. Uh, and that is the characteristic of a series motor. It has a high starting torque and the application goes for things that needs high initial torque, such as a crane or hoist uh, to lift up things. Right? Thank you.